Yazan is just like you and me. He has a job, a family, he's an avid supporter of Trump because who isn't? And he loves dogs, of course. But there's one thing that sets him apart from the rest of us. He suffers from pleomorphic xanthoastrocytoma, a rare form of a brain tumor. It's eaten away at him over the last few or four months, yet he's constantly reassured that there could be a cure to cancer just around the corner. He's tried several medications, each of which take around three months to gain substantial data to signify whether or not this cure is working. However, most of the time, they don't. Now, here's Christina. Christina represents a vast majority of us. She supplies funds to local cancer, ch to local charities that support uh, cancer research on a weekly basis. She doesn't understand where most of these funds go or, or where they're allocated, but she still supplies them. Everyone is affected by cancer in some way or another. It's such a prominent illness in today's society. We all know what it is, we all know how terrible it is, and we all hope that our loved ones never have to go through this hellish experience. Cancer rate continue to rise to this day, and it's a terrible issue that we need to tackle. Now to get everyone on the same page, we'll just briefly describe how this process of cancer goes. Well, cancer starts off as a single benign mutated cell, which, if it's not wiped out by our immune system, by the white blood cells in our immune system, it can evolve to become a benign tumor. And just to give you an idea, these tumors contain at least 100 million cancer cells, showing you how, how quickly they're able to replicate. As they continue to grow, then the blood vessels in our body can start to form around them. And when that happens, more and more nutrients are supplied to these tumors. And when more and more nutrients are supplied, the tumors are able to grow quicker and quicker. After a while, if our body is still incapable of extirpating these tumors, metastasis can occur. And that is the process in which a cancer cell penetrates the wall of one of these blood vessels and starts to travel around the body, starting to form tumors elsewhere. And this is where cancer starts to become dangerous. Unfortunately, cancer cells replicate much quicker than ordinary cells. So if you're suffering from this, then, on, then the downfall is that you, the number of mutated cells in your body will begin to increase. As of now, we have several different treatments in order to cure cancer. The three main cancer treatments we'll be using, we, most usually, we use mostly common, are radi uh, surgery, radiotherapy, and chemotherapy. Now to get everyone on the same page, we'll briefly describe each one of these processes. Well, surgery is pretty self-explanatory. The surgeon opens up the area in which the tumor is located and removes the chunk where he, where he or she believes that all the cancer cells are located. Now, for radiotherapy, x-rays are beamed towards the direction in which the, cancer, where, in which the tumor is located. And since the x-rays are ionizing, they're able to kill them all. But at the same time, if excess treatment is used in this manner, then ordinary cells within our bodies can start to die off as well. And inevitably, can organs Cells in our organs and our tissues will be affected, leading to our own bodily functions starting to malfunction. So the way chemotherapy works is basically every single cell goes through mitosis. Mitosis is the process when a cell duplicates, and that's why we have so many cells in our body. Now, how chemotherapy works is that we inject this or take it in as a drug, and basically these cancer cells are now prevented from going through mitosis. However, the problem with this is every cell needs to go through mitosis. So when this chemical is introduced into our body, even the functional cells around the tumor are also affected by this, and they can't go through mitosis. This could lead to several things, such as organ failure. Now, we can see the path that we're going down right here, and it's much like a bottle cap, to put it simply. The further we progress, the harder it becomes to advance our technological capabilities, and to some, it may even be impossible to reach the ultimate cure with this current perspective. What we're Every year, national health organizations pour billions and billions of dollars into this field for cancer research, and it, we've reached a discouraging plateau over the last few years. Immunotherapy, as well as the other aforementioned treatments, are absolutely incredible, but there's only so much we can improve them, and our funding isn't being allocated in the right places anymore. Especially since it's absolutely frustrating when one in four people diagnosed with cancer die due to this very reason, considering all the amount of funding that we're implementing into this field. As of our current technological capabilities, we have many different ways of curing cancer. One of these ways is surgery. And the problem with this is that when a surgeon is taking on surgery, the surgeon only has the indication to signify where the cancer cell is only because where it's situated, it's slightly harder than the rest of the tissue it's on. Now in cases such as Yazan, when it's brain cancer, this is a serious issue. 
because many of these vital organs could be affected. And that's why now the surgeon has the decision to either take an inch out of each side of the tumor or just the tumor to eradicate every single one of their cells. Cancelous. Unfortunately, this is a necessity because even if a single cancer cell is left behind, it can start to replicate. And it's become immune to other treatments that the body has taken at this point as it's already been through all the different ones. But if a single cancer is left behind, it can start to replicate and undergo metastasis all over again. And the tumors formed will be even stronger than the ones before. But at the same time, people like Yezan, who suffer from pheomorphic xanthoastrocytoma, the tumors tend to be close to the hypothalamus. And for those of you that don't know, the hypothalamus is the part of the brain where short-term memory is transferred into long-term memory. And when this, and if a crucial segment of this is removed, then yes, will be living his life in 50 second intervals, being incapable of remembering moments that happened prior to that specific moment. And basically, when these treatments go around, each treatment will not always take the cancer cells out. There'll be first, there'll be one treatment at the start, then there could be secondary treatments. And basically, every time someone gets these treatments, their cancer cells start to become more immune as they evolve, making it harder for these cancer cells to be taken out of the body and being completely killed. So the problem with this is that when a cancer cell, it starts to become more regressive because every time you take these cells out, it's better to then just leave them because not always will all the cancer cells be eradicated. There'll be some left behind and these cells will be more powerful than all the others as they are immune to these treatments. Now the problem with this is, in things such as chemotherapy, not all the cancer cells are eradicated completely. There will be a few left behind and these cells will be the strongest. Now we're not advocating to completely abandon our progress altogether. That would be absolutely ridiculous, as our progress is still remarkable. But if every single researcher in this field is working through the same procedure and the progress is still hitting a definitive, a definitive plateau, we need to change something. But sometimes creativity is more valuable than research in areas where research ceases to progress rapidly. Now if we look at this diagram again, we can see that Perhaps by changing our perspective, we would be able to reach that ultimate cure, in which every person diagnosed with cancer will be able to walk away from it completely free. Now, we'll be discussing a few new perspectives that have been taken into account at a small level, but haven't been considered at a large scale, and therefore haven't received sufficient funding to progress. As we can see here, the cancer cells, as we learned earlier, can start to become more and more immune. So these new treatments are able to eradicate that problem. The first one is using liposomes in cancer therapeutics. By doing this, we inject the cure for the cancer into the phospholipid bilayer. Think of it as a bubble. When we inject this bubble, we direct it towards the specific cancer cell that we wanted to counteract. And in this case, when they come into contact with each other, they fuse since they have the exact same membrane. When this happens, by endocytosis, the cure enters the cancer cell. And because of that, the cancer cell affected is the only one that dies. This alleviates the issue that arises when using chemotherapy, where we use one single general chemical, and by that, sorry, and by that, other cells within the tumor become immune to it. So we can manufacture several different chemicals to ensure that the cure is the one that always wins. Another treatment that we should be focusing on is basically involving implanting gold particles into your body. These gold particles are chemically attracted to cancer cells. So as soon as it's introduced into your body, these gold particles attach to the cancer cells and they stick onto them. So when we do take a PET scanner, these cancer cells are now illuminated by the gold particles. This helps surgeons substantially because now they don't need to just signify, they don't need to detect it whether or not it's just a bit harder than the tissue. They know exactly whether it is and they don't need to go through that trouble to decide whether or not they have to take an inch out of each, of the, each side of the tumor. Now, there are many treatments that have yet to be elucidated, two of which we just proposed. And a lot of the time, we believe that the funds allocated towards progressing our current established uh, treatments would be better off allocated towards these new progressing ideas. Because if we're able to improve these to a substantial level, we'll be able to have different ways of treating cancer. And with that, we'll be able to find more cures quicker. Now, in an ideal world, everything will be good for Yazan with his job, with his family, and of course, with his dog. And as of Christina, she will continue to willingly fund these cancer treatment researchers. And hopefully, this will help us substantially. What this other, people like Christina still give us hope that 
we can start winning this war against cancer. Thank you for listening. And have a good